Bible class. Let's come to order. Open the scriptures to the little book of 2 John. For weeks, I had been saying 1 John, but we completed that book of the Bible, New Testament last class. 2 John chapter, well, excuse me, 2 John verse number one. There are no chapter divisions. 2 John, 2 John, along with 3 John, they almost tie for being the shortest, shortest epistle in the New Testament. 2 John is actually shorter than Philemon. 2 John is shorter than Jude. 2 John, of course, only has 13 verses. Let me read to you verse 1, and let's discuss verse 1 of the little epistle of 2 John. The elder, I'm going to read the verse, the elder unto the elect lady and her children. Already in the first line, we have been given the author, the sender, calls himself the elder and the addressee. To whom is he writing? The elect lady and her children. Comma, whom I love in the truth, not I love in the flesh, whom I love in the truth, and not I only. Elect lady, we're going to have to figure out who she is. I'm not the only one that loves you in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Sort of implying if you know the truth and Jesus is the truth, then you will love the others who also know the truth. John's back on it again, loving our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Did I say John's back on it again? Mm -hmm. And did you say we were studying the epistle of Second John? I did. But it says, the elder, the elder, if you notice me moving, I'm sitting on a swing. Debbie loves our swing on our downstairs porch facing the creek here at the house. We got back in a little while ago from uh, a very precious surface last night up in the mountains, beautiful mountains of North Georgia. And um, I just felt like this was a peaceful place. You might hear the crickets already in the backgrounds getting night you can tell that to study second john verse one the elder the elder i'm just going to go ahead and say it i believe that's what john calls himself in this epistle the elder let me give you the greek for the word elder presbyteros Presbuteros. What does it mean? Well, it means exactly what it says here. The elder, the older man, the senior among us. It uh, often has the idea of dignity. A, a statesman. The statesman who is among us. I've read in several sources that say here, Presbyteros, the elder, does not always deal with age, though we believe John may be, John may be way on up in years as he writes these words. It, it would not surprise me, this is conjecture class, John's in his 80s, maybe even maybe even in his 90s, as he pens these words. He would qualify the elder. 
But not only can it refer to many, many years in age, it can refer to someone with rank, someone with authority, someone who has displayed pristine leadership qualities. And I think that is equally as important here as the decades of life that John has lived. Brother Bagwell, why do you keep saying John? Because his name is obviously in verse 1 not given as the writer. Church history. As far back as we can go, the ancient writers from rabbis to early Christian brethren have taught that John is the writer of what we now call Second John. This is John, the disciple of our Lord Jesus. In fact, let me say this. Not only John, the disciple of our Lord Jesus, but John, this is important, the only living disciple of our Lord Jesus. By now, by this late date, uh, the other disciples have, have died. I want to say have been slain because that's what happened to them. Best we can discover by history. They were martyred for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior, our Savior, the Son of God. So, uh, let it be said in this class, the elder is none other than John himself. We've got the testimony of church history. We've got the testimony I have, you probably do too, of every preacher of the Word of God uh, uh, as I've been growing up. And, and, and also we've got the testimony of our Bibles, of our King James Bible, the second epistle of John the elder. Some sirens have gone by upon the main highway. I don't know if it was a fire truck or an ambulance or a police officer. Uh, some of the neighborhood dogs, I think, are responding to that. Stay with me, class. <laughs> uh, give me your attention, as our teachers used to say, the elder. Now, to whom is John writing? the elder unto the elect lady and her children. The elder unto the elect lady and her children. We have to make a decision here. We have to make an interpretive decision. Is he writing to an individual woman that he knew in those days long ago, calling her the elect lady? Or is there perhaps some symbolism behind this term, the elect lady? Let me give you the vocabulary for the elect lady. And that's going to sound very simple. The uh, word is electos. Electos. It's from ek and the lego. Lego initially. Fundamentally, it means to pick out, to choose an elect lady. And here the word lady is not the word for woman that is normally used. It is the word, it is the word kuria, kuria. The word Lord in Greek is kurios, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is kuria. It is the feminine form of the word for Lord. So, however we're going to interpret the elect lady, it's someone with dignity, someone with authority, someone who is being deeply honored and loved to the elect lady and her children. Here are the two predominant chains of thought on the individuals 
to whom John is writing, the elder unto the elect lady. Number one, that it is a literal woman. Number two, that it is another elect lady. Listen to me, the church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after prayer, reading, I suppose upwards of a dozen commentaries, I have come to the decision John is writing to a church and he is calling her the elect lady. You say, preacher, I, I, I don't understand. Why would he call the church a lady? All the way through the New Testament, when the church is typified, discussed, and personified, it's always a woman. I think that uh, we would all agree the church is called the bride of Jesus Christ. That's feminine. That's feminine. Listen to Paul. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Husband, love your wife. Christ loved the church. Christ is the bridegroom. The church is his wife, his bride. Again, we're talking feminine gender. We're talking about a lady. Elect lady. Why would that word lady be curia? Listen to me. I hope I get an amen. Because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the local assemblies of our Savior scattered throughout the world, they have God-given authority. They have authority to preach the word. They have authority to baptize the newly saved. They have authority to serve communion, the Lord's Supper. They have authority to discipline. If a wayward member drifts from God's will and, and you go see him and he will not reprint him, you have the authority to dismiss him and even remove his name from membership if need be. I see the curia part, the authority of the local church. But what about that preacher? What about that? What about that electos chosen? Oh my, the church is chosen. Everybody's not going to agree with Brother Bagwell. And I'm going to love you anyway. I do not believe God elects that person to go to heaven and that person to go to heaven and overlooks those eight people and then elects that person to go to heaven. I do not believe the Bible, the overall scope of the Bible teaches that. I believe Jesus died for everybody. I believe every man, woman, boy, or girl convicted of the Holy Ghost can get saved. But I do believe this. The body of believers is an elect body. The church of the Lord Jesus. I don't believe God elects individuals. I believe God elected Israel in the Old Testament. I believe God elected the church as a body in the New Testament. And how do I get into the church? How do I get in among God's elect to be counted? Among, I'll tell you how. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I trust and believe and say, and the Holy Ghost puts me in Christ, in the body. I become an elected individual because I am in the elect body, the elect lady, the elect lady. There is a verse in Isaiah 42, and it simply calls Jesus the servant of the Lord, the Son of God. God calls him mine elect, mine elect. Oh, that verse has helped me tons. The moment I got saved, the Holy Ghost picked me up out of this hell-bound world and put me in Christ Jesus, put me in the Lord. Everybody agrees with that. And Jesus is God's elect. I was put into the elect. I am a member of the elected body of the... Peter said, you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. I'm glad I'm among the chosen. You say, am I? If you'll believe on the Lord Jesus as your Savior. If you'll trust Him in full salvation by grace, through faith, He'll put you in the church. He'll baptize you into the body of Christ. Would somebody say amen? The elder 
under the elect lady. I believe he's writing to a church. Now, those that believe he's writing to a woman, I've got a question. Where's her husband? John doesn't mention her husband. You say, well, preacher, maybe she's a widow because John's going to say, I love you. I love you. John does not do that. John does that. There's one person in Scripture John says he loved. He loved the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Jesus did turn Mary, his mother, over to John as Jesus hung on the cross of Calvary. And I'm sure John loved her and cared for her. John loves Jesus. John doesn't love some woman, some lady, and write a letter of love, letter to that. No, I don't think woman fits. I think the church, the elect lady. And I believe the rest of the verses of Second John will prove this to be true. The elect lady and her children. Oh, Brother Bagwell, wait a minute. A church can't have children. Why, well, sure they can. This church begins to start a little independent mission over here. Some folks get, and then there's another church. This church sponsored that church. And then that church. And then that church. Uh, we live in the greater Chattanooga vicinity, North Georgia, Tunnel Hill, Georgia, but in the greater Chattanooga vicinity. Uh, oh my, uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, there was a church up here in Chattanooga, a huge church, a large church, and it had 40 some odd mission churches throughout our area. I preach at one, uh, uh, a church that was once a mission of that, of that giant uh, church in uh, Chattanooga. Churches have babies. Churches have plants, church plants, little congregations, little missions. And then on top of that, to the elect lady and her children, the soul that got saved last Sunday, church, that's one of your children. Uh, that family that started coming and got saved and wants to be baptized, that's part of your children. It fits. The elder, everybody in a first century Christian church would know just that word. Oh, that's John. That's John, presbyteros. There is reason to believe this word presbyteros in the New Testament also applies to pastors. I think I can show you some instances where pastors uh, uh, are, are included in that word presbyteros. That word, and John is certainly a pastor. History says John pastored the church at Ephesus. That's where his heart was. And uh, he may be writing. We learned last lesson to some Christians in the city of Ephesus. Maybe he's away for summer. And we know he was banished to the Isle of Patmos when he wrote, John was, when he wrote the book of Revelation. The elder under the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth. You reckon John loved the church? Whom I loved in the truth. That word I, it is very emphatic in verse 1 here. It is ego, E-G-O. Whom I love in the truth. Richard Bagel, what does that mean? I love, that's agape, it's the agape verb. It the, the I can be built into the ending of that verb. And it would just be the verb, but it would be first person, singular, I love, I love. But that's not the way the Holy Ghost, he added especially, emphatically, I, ego, agapeo, ego, agapeo, I, John. And I ought to be saying I, preacher Mike Bagwell. And class member, you ought to be saying, I, I love my church. I love my church in the truth. I appreciate my church whom I love in the truth. Whom I love and, and love there, agapeo, is a present tense verb. I'm loving it and loving it and loving it. I don't get mad at it. I don't pout at it. I, I don't disagree with it. I don't try to be a troublemaker. I love my church. I'll be unselfish toward it. I'll support it. Uh, and, uh, and I'll be loyal to it. Whom we love in the truth. In the truth. And preacher, what's the word truth? None other than Jesus. Jesus is the truth. The gospel is the truth. The word of God is the truth. Whom I love in the truth. You know what that means? Automatically. 
whom I love in the truth means I will not. I will not say I love you if you're in error. Instead of saying I love you, I will come and correct you. I will come and rebuke you. I will come and try to set you in order. I will be doing that because I love. John does not love in error. He loves in the truth. There's some limits to this thing called love. We can only love in the truth. We can only love in terms of righteousness and holiness and purity. And then John adds this beautiful addendum, and not I only. I'm not the only one that loves the church. I'm not the only one that appreciates it for the truth it preaches and for which it stands, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. All they that have known the truth. Have known, I know you're going to ask me what verb, gnosko. Gnosko, and it's in the perfect tense. You knew the truth the day you got saved. You knew the truth the day they told you Jesus uh, came out of the grave. You knew the truth the day you learned Jesus is the Son of God. And once you knew it, you've never forgotten it. You've never denied it. You've never wondered about it. You've always lived by it. You accepted it to be gospel truth. And all, I love you in the truth. And also all they that have known that's experientially knowing personally i know jesus experientially i know him personally he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own like the old song says i have known the truth and here the article is added in the greek text ho ho what's the the and and, and then for truth as we have Aletheia, Aletheia, and what? Oh, let me talk about truth. Aletheia. I've given it before. It is a combination of two Greek words that means if you ever see it, the truth. If you ever get it, the truth. If it ever hits you, the truth. If you ever appropriate it, the truth. If that ever happens, you'll never get over it. You'll never forget it. You'll never <laughs> lump. The, the, the verb that is used literally means you will not forget it. You will not lose it. You will not misplace it if you've ever been hit with the truth. Mm, mm. Let me give you the exact word again. And uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful word, the truth. Aletheia. 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 Oh, my. You say, preacher, is that it? That is the first verse, the introductory verse to Second John. We've looked at the vocab. You'll Larry, let me read it again. The elder, I believe that's John, to the elect lady, a church, might be at Ephesus. It might be the churches around the area of Ephesus, much like Revelation 2 and 3. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, the church. He's writing to a an elect lady, the church, and her children, whom I love. John would lay down his life for the church, whom I love in the truth. I'm not going to lead you to error. I'm going to stand against those who, and there are those trying to lead this church into error. We'll see it. We'll see it right here in Second John. I'm not going. I'm going to love you in the truth. I'm not going to let you drift from the truth, and not only me, everybody else that has known the truth. There is a brotherhood among those who know the truth. I know the truth. I know Jesus. Class, you know the truth. You know Jesus, and that alone is one of the things that draws us together. I know Him. You know him. I want to know what he says. You do as well. I want to get in his word because that's where I learn what and you do too. It's the common denominator that draws us together to the church. Whom I love in the truth. Not just me, all those who have known and are learning the truth that is in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
can I give you some uh, some facts that I have learned now about 2 John we just looked at verse 1 next lesson we'll go to verse 2 and then we'll work our way through these 13 verses truth did you notice that two times in the first verse truth has come up has appeared and four times in the first four verses we hadn't got that far yet truth will surface I made some notes truth truth is used ten times in 1st John and four times in 2nd John I'm comparing 1st John and 2nd John love is used 33 times in 1st John now we're talking about five chapters in 1st John we're talking about 13 verses in 2nd John four times in 2nd John Antichrist is used three times in 1st John but once in 2nd John and that little handful of verses that your joy may be full that your joy may be full it's used three times in the gospel of John one time in 1st John and one time in it's one of John's themes I'm saying the elder got to be John. It is John. You can tell it by the vocabulary. You can tell it by the emphasis that he gives again and again and again. And, and then may I say this about Second John. I don't think I included it as we were talking about verse 1. It is written late in New Testament history. Maybe as late as 95 or 96 A.D. Uh, it is near, well, you can tell, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. Near the end of the compilation, the building of what we call the canon of Scripture, the Word of God, 3 John. Basically, the minor prophets. Basically, they're laid out in chronological order. Hosea, Joel, Amos, early. Malachi, late. Very late in Old Testament history. Same thing. Same thing with the New Testament. The Gospels come first. The liberals say they weren't written first, but Brother Bagel's telling you they're written by eyewitnesses. They do come first. And, and then we work our way through. And by the time you get to 3 John, late. Late in the New Testament. Mm. Mm-mm. Just trying to look and see if there might be some. Oh, yes. Let me give you this verse. I just want to read it to you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Talking about the tribulation. Talking about the Antichrist. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. They're going to be misled, the lost, in the tribulation. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. That struck me like a ton of bricks. The love of the truth. John just said to a church, I love you in the truth. And that's tantamount to John saying, I have a love for the truth. And I just read... If you've got the love of the truth, you can be saved. You know why? Jesus is the truth. The cross of Calvary is the truth. Uh, the blood atonement is the truth. Thank God. Thank God for these great truths. Mm. Notice the absence of something in Second John. I think it's important. John does not call himself an apostle. When a man of God has to say, I am an apostle of the Lord Jesus, he's flashing his badge like an officer would do, showing his badge. You all better obey me. I have the authority invested in me uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ. Not one time in Second John does, uh, does John the elder pull his badge you better be what I say. I'm an apostle. It's missing. You know why? 
because he loves the church. The church loves him. You don't have to pull rank. You don't have to mention you're an apostle when it's already a spirit of obedience and guidance. He just says, I'm the elder. I'm the preacher. I'm the one that told you about Jesus. Oh, that's so beautiful. Almost everywhere Paul goes, he has to flash his badge, I am an apostle. That's because he was opposed. That's because people disagreed with him. That's because people stood up against him and, and uh, tried to lead his churches away from But here's a beautiful exception. When Paul wrote to the Philippians, his loving little assembly, the church next to the Thessalonians that loved him, I guess more than any church he ever served, when he writes to them, he doesn't use the word apostle. Listen, here's Philippians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul and Timothy... Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints at Philippi. The sir, he didn't flash a badge. He said, I'm the slave. I'm a servant. I'm, a, I, I'm here to help you grow in the grace of an almighty God. I mentioned the church as a woman when we first began our class. And, and I sense someone bristled there. Uh, listen to Paul. I'm going to read to you 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. I'm jealous over you. He's writing to the church, the Corinthian church. I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you, church, to one husband. That's Jesus. To one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin. I want you to be pure when I present you to Jesus. That's the church being portrayed as a lady, as an elect lady. Wow. Wow. I was going to take some time and show you that elders could be Another name for pastors. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to run out of time. Acts 11.30. Acts 14.23. Acts 20.17. Acts 21.18. In each of these cases, the word elders seems to me to apply to the pastors in a given area. The pastors in a given area. Overall, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John are going to fit like a hand in a custom-made glove. You can tell they're from the same Holy Ghost, from the same writer of John. One scholar said, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John share literary <laughs> homogenized, liter literarily they are homogenized epistles. Homo homogen. I can't say the word. They are so much alike. There is no doubt. They flowed from the same pen. Literary, literary homogenized epistles. Beautifully. Beautifully constructed by the same Holy Ghost. All three. John, I think, holding the pen. Holding the pencil. Truth. Truth. Great deal in Second John about the truth. Pilate said one day to Jesus, and I think Pilate was mocking, what is truth? Jesus was under arrest. Pilate was grilling him. John 18, verse 38, what is truth? What little did Pilate know? Truth was standing in front of him that day and had he bowed his head and trusted Pilate could have gone to heaven whereas I fear he went to hell one more little idea about truth I took my laptop and I did some research the word truth or truths possessive truth or truth or even the adverb truly the true cognate family of words 
27 times in John's Gospel, 10 times in 1 John, 6 times in 2 John, 6 times in 3 John. John is going to... You say, Preacher, I thought he talked a lot about love. He does. But love is within the corral of the truth. It can't be love if it's condoning evil. It can't be love if it's condoning a pack of lies. It can only be real love if it's condoning the truth, preaching the truth, believing the truth. Class, may I suggest, it's up to you, read the little epistle of Second John a few times before we meet again. We meet for class every other night, as you know. But we're off to a we're off to a, a reasonably good start in this first the elder John to the elect lady, a local assembly somewhere, and her children, other churches round about her, whom I love in the truth. The Gnostics, the false teachers who have pestered John all the way through the book of 1 John, they neither love the church nor do they speak truth to the church. That crowd of Gnostics, they don't even believe Jesus came in the flesh. They don't love the church. They want the money from the church. They want to use the church. They want to abuse the church. They don't love the church. And they certainly don't have the truth. They've got error. They don't believe Jesus is God's son. They don't believe he came in a human body. They don't believe he died for sinners. They don't believe blood atonement's the way to get saved. No, they don't believe any of that. So John reverses it and says to the church, I love you. They don't. I love you. And I love you in the truth. I love you and I'm going to keep you in the truth. They don't even love you. And they certainly don't guide you into the truth. If you've got a pastor who loves you, and preaches the truth, you ought to say hallelujah to God. Praise His good name. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity studying your word tonight on the porch. Got the lights on. Swing moves a little bit as I've been uh, speaking. Crickets in the background. Just a peaceful night to get in your book. God, would you bless our class would you bless our study of Second John? Show us things we would have not otherwise seen by the time we're investing in this portion of thy word. I'll pray Psalm 119. Open our eyes that we may see wondrous things out of this little epistle of Scripture. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen. I've enjoyed it, class. Meet us again. Tell others about it. Go to YouTube if you have not done so and subscribe. Touch that little subscribe thing. Uh, uh, we're nearing 2,000 subscribers. That thrills me. I'd like to see us inch on above it. You can help. Go to our YouTube channel. Click on subscribe. And uh, keep watching as we continue to study the Word of God.